Hi, welcome back. All right, so today we're going to do something a little different. We've been working mostly, if you've watched the previous videos, uh, primarily in pencil, number two pencil, which is my favorite if you've seen the um, different videos that I've done. Um, you may have touched on some of the other ones where I've done some cartooning and stuff like that, but in this basic drawing series, um, we're going to get a little more bold today. And we're going to draw along the lines of, if any of you have gone to any of these um, <clears throat> little painting, uh, paint at a restaurant and um, sip and paint or any of those kind of things, we're going to do something kind of like that. It's like a draw along. We're going to base this on folk art, specifically Mexican folk art. And basically, that's just something. It's a very simplified. We're going to do kind of a landscape. But, um, you know, it's, it's very flat. We're not dealing with any real perspective today. And it's very kind of stylized. It's very simplistic, okay? So uh, without further ado, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw this. We're just gonna lay it right down in marker, crepa, uh, charcoal, whatever you happen to have, paint, uh, markers, anything. Because um, we're gonna do some full color. So here's what we're gonna do. Mexican folk art, um, specifically has a lot of different designs and a lot of brilliant colors and stuff like that. So this is going to be loosely based on um, some of the uh, images that I've seen in the past. Okay, so let's not mess around. Let's get drawing. Okay, so tip this down here. I'll get a good look at our pad and we will begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our, you know, how are we going to move this over a little bit? How are we going to set up our drawing. So we work, we're gonna set, do a landscape, like I said. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start about three quarters of the way up the paper. Um, remember, this is very loose. You do not have to draw exactly like I draw. This is an exercise that I've done with um, kids online, but it's just great for kids and adults alone um, as well. So here we go. This is gonna be our hill area. Mexican folk art has a lot to do with bright colors, suns, all kinds of cool stuff. Now over here, I'm gonna put a building. Uh, this would be kind of like a barn. And remember, we are this we are doing very simplified drawings, very simple. This does have, you might say it's got a little perspective in it. Okay. We got this so far. So we got this barn with this silo. All right. So now, and you can stop this at any point, you know, and draw along. <clears throat> We're gonna put some trees here. And these are going to be these very childlike trees because we are doing folk art. So we don't have to be sophisticated with our drawings in any way, shape or form. This is what we have so far. We'll put some trees here. Actually, I'm going to put one over here too, and then we're going to hold this up so you can see it. So this is loosely based on some images that I have been studying as I've looked at different types of folk art here in the Southwest. All right, so we have this very basic kind of thing going on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to divide this up into areas. And we're going to be putting some designs in here. Now you do not have to have yours exactly the way that I have. So here we have this. Now I'm going to be coloring this in. You can use any colors that you want. Okay. Um, but here we go with some design. So let me get some details in here. We will put, um, ah, what the heck, we'll put some windows in here on our little barn. And, but I'm not gonna do too much here. And we'll even put a barn door there. Now, one of the things that is very prominent in Southwest art is the sun. I'm actually going to do that in color, not outline it in dark. What I'm going to do is put some designs in. So you can use any sort of 
shapes, designs, colors that you want. So I'm going to divide this up into different areas like this. Put some shapes here. And these are very random. You just want to have these areas where you can add lots and lots of color. And what I may do, I haven't done this before. What I may do is do like a mixed media here. Um, some of it in gray pot and some of it in a marker just to show the different textures that you can get in the different colors. So I'm just putting in some different shapes here and there. Let's see, we'll divide this guy up. We'll put some more circles. These circles are very prominent in this art here. Divide this up like that. This guy will have, let's have him going this way. Why not? Like that. And then I'll put some little swirlies over here like that. Okay. I'm leaving a space here because I'm going to put my sun in there because the sun is very prominent. Okay. And you could do it a couple of different ways. I'm going to have it kind of coming up over the horizon. I'm put in some more shapes here in our trees. Like that. And I'm going to add some colors in and stuff like that too. All right. Let's grab a marker here and let's put our sun in. So I'm going to have mine coming up over here, but we're going to have a very stylized kind of thing. And again, here in the Southwest, you often see images like this. where we have these rays coming off because the sun is a big deal. So in my world here, I'm going to call it this guy right in. So here's marker. This gives you an idea of what we might have here. You can use crayon. You can use anything you want. Like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of mixed media here but for right now and here's the cool thing <clears throat> your colors i mean just because i'm going to color my trees green does not mean you have to this is folk art so they could be anything they can be pink they can be blue whatever color you want there was a cool story um, that i love to share about this young artist was painting he was a painting a, a sunrise and this woman came over and she was looking at his paintings and he had all these bizarre colors and stuff that you couldn't really see and this woman came up to him and said I don't see those colors in the sunrise and his reply was yes but don't you wish you could so the moral of the story is as an artist you can make stuff however you want okay so i'm still working in marker here coloring my trees in again this stuff is random and because you're watching on video it's great because i don't have to take the time to keep stopping and stuff like that you can stop me anytime you want follow my progress draw or color at your own pace with your own colors and i've done this several times because like i say i have done this as an exercise with students and everyone comes out differently even though i use the same kind of basics and i am actually going to use um some brown here why not because i have Like I say, they don't have to be. Look at this dried up marker. I get some texture with this guy. I think he's going in the bin. Mm-hmm. Yep, that guy's MG. Let's get another one here, purple. Got a really 
little small one. How about a colored pencil? That will work. And this guy here. And I'll do one more. Now the fun part. So this is what we have so far. What do we want to do with the sky? What do we want to do with our fields here? That's what these would be like fields and stuff. But again, they can be any color you want. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do this guy in marker as well. And then I'm going to switch to something else, I think. Because I have a bunch of different colors that I can use. And I want you to notice I'm not being all super careful trying to stay in the lines. You can do this as tight as you want or as loose. Now, if I were doing a more realistic drawing, I would try to have this side of the barn because it's a way, if you watch my other drawings on shading, you would see that this is facing away from <clears throat> From the light source, I would probably um, have it darker, but this is folk art. It's not meant to be super realistic, okay? I just randomly grabbed a blue here. I could do the roof in blue if I wanted to. I can do it in black, <clears throat> which I think I'll do. Then I think I'm going to attack the sky. Now, typically, we may think of the sky as being blue. And if you look at what I've done so far, a lot of the colors are maybe what we would actually see for these objects. Again, feel free to color them any way you choose. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a yellow color pencil. Yellow color. And I'm going to do my whole sky. <clears throat> the reason I'm using colored pencil is because, number one, I like the look. Number two, I can cover a large space quickly. This would be great for painting, if you were doing watercolor or acrylics. Um, any kind of paint would be great for this. This is going to look cool, though. I want you to notice that I keep turning my paper around because that's the way it makes it easier for me to try to keep my drawing a little more uniform. And feel free to do that, of course. And into it. Let me darken it up over here a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't like the white. I'm going to put that yellow right in there as well. Okay, so let's do that. Color right over the marker. Mixed media, when we're using color pencil with marker, we can go right over it. It's not going to cover it up too much, especially with these. This particular color pencil is a less expensive one, so the pigment is not real, real strong there i could use crayon i could use whatever i want to look at this nice all right now let's get into some of the <clears throat> other areas here now what happens what happens if i use these okay so we got some cray pods here oil pastels these are kind of fun i don't use them very often but let's see what happens. I color this in. And remember, I talked about the tooth of the paper in one of my other videos, and that is the texture. If I go really lightly with my cray paws, there's going to be a lot of white because of the texture of the paper. This particular case, I'm okay with that. And now I could color, if I'm going to use a different color for my circles here, 
and I'll actually do it in another one because I already started kind of going around them. If I'm going to use a um, oil pastel on the little dots as well, the little circles, I don't have to be very careful about going around them. Uh, let's do those in red because going over them would work just fine. The other way I could do that is do them in marker first, these little guys here, and it would show up just nicely. So we have that. Now let's do some green and yellow in here. Um, we're going to use as well, and we'll do some green. Again, I'm not being real careful about going into here. I can kind of blend these really nicely if I wanted to, too. So go like this. Real quick. These colors, you can use whatever colors you want. Bright colors, bold colors. Let's throw some yellow in there. Let's see what that looks like. That's cool. You know what I think we'll do? And again, I'm mixing. So I have marker, colored pencil for the background. I've got cray paws here. Let's do this. Let's throw in some crayons. So, let's do, um, hmm, I haven't used purple yet, let's use some purple here, and let's see what happens. Crayon next to cray paws. This is just a regular old crayon, and I'm going to go around these. Like I said, depending on what colors you're using, you could certainly color those in first and then just go over them with a lighter color. It would work. I want you to experiment with this. Okay, so see how that's coming out. You can skip ahead. You don't have to sit there and watch me skip ahead to see what's going on. Skip ahead to the end. What the heck? Why not? Don't forget to subscribe, though. All right, so we got that. Then what? What the heck are we going to put on there? Well, let's do some more. This is just a different kind of red. I just randomly grabbed it. What is this? Let's see. Red violet. Mm, that should go nicely. All right, so we put that in there. Again, I'm doing this rather quickly. Partly for the video, but partly be like I say, because it's folk art. The one thing you do want to do, though, this whole paper should be colored in. You shouldn't see any white. Okay? Now we're getting there. All right, let's throw some more orange in. <clears throat> and again, crayon. Now, I'm really pushing down. Here, I want you to see this. This is crayon, this purple. This is crayon as well. What's the difference? The difference is how hard I'm pressing, okay? Look at all the texture here. Very little texture here, okay? Big difference. I'm really pushing it into the paper. I could do the same thing with the oil pastels as well. It all depends on your pressure. Okay, so we'll put this in here. Again, I want to get as much done as I can in the time that I have. But you can certainly shoot ahead. And because this is a really quick drawing, you know, you can do it. You can try it over and over again. What you could do is use your original drawing. You could actually do a tracing of it. And then just try it in different, all different colors and stuff like that. Why not? All right, what do we want to put in there? Look at all the colors we got for you. Haven't used pink yet. Let's use pink. Color. 
colors. I'll tell you, here in the Southwest, nobody's afraid of color, that's for sure. And one color that's very prevalent is turquoise. I'm gonna see if I can find some turquoise in here. Again, I'm really bearing down to try to get a really good coverage. My crayon. Push it down in there. All right, let's see if we can find it. These are all similar. Okay, so let's go with this. <clears throat> Light blue. We already kind of have that over here. We're going to do it. Now this I'm going to color right over these guys. Now watch this. Now, color pencil. Remember, colored pencil is very similar to crayon. It is a kind of waxy kind of thing. So you got to be careful what you're going to cover color over it with. All right. So, but I got that in colored pencil. Now, I could also use, it has to be darker. I could also use crayon. I could also use a colored pencil. But look at this. I'm going to go over that with purple. In my crayon and it shows up just fine okay let's do some different colors down here let's do a different green a dark green not that going in here and i think we need some more yellow uh oh just lost <laughs> All right, and over here, I'm just going to go over this in yellow while I have it. And then we'll do some this orange, got orange over here. I'm using a different, more red orange here. And that was crayon, this is color pencil. So you can use all these different, all the different media, but you don't have to. You can use one, like I say, I could do, stick with markers, I could stick with colored pencil. Let's just finish this up real quick. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I can't decide. Um, I think I'm going to do a, another different purple here. Colored pencil. Yeah, that will be different. Lots of reds, yellows, bright greens out here. Lots of earth colors too. Okay, so there's our finished drawing. Very cool. And like I say, you can use all these designs, you can change them up, you can reuse them. Everyone could be the same, everyone can be different. The colors, whatever you want. So, I guess the moral of the story is just have fun with it and experiment. Um, you can change up this whole design. You could add different hills in the front. You can add a different building or no building whatsoever. It's all up to you. So I want you to have fun and enjoy the color. See you later.